ya Watching them movies and talking about them too We got so many favorites and they're waiting here for you We got movies for kids, but don't be mad Because we also got the movies meant, 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 meant for mommies and dads Come on to Cinemassacre Video Here's a few stories about Doofus and Dynamo. Doofus here blows in his NES games. Little does he know, it actually damages them with moisture. Dynamo here uses compressed air, Q-tips, and rubbing alcohol to give his games a fresh sparkle. Doofus here uses his actual credit card number to make online purchases. Whoops, looks like your number was stolen, Doofus. But Dynamo here is careful. He uses Privacy.com to mask his actual credit card number. His information is secure and he can purchase anything online without the risk of being hacked. Privacy.com gives you a brand new virtual credit card number for every purchase you make with just one click. It's simple, very secure, and best of all, it's free to use with no hidden fees. Don't be a doofus. Head over to privacy.com slash cinemassacre. For a limited time, our fans will get a free $5 to spend on your first purchase. Be a dynamo by going to P-R-I-V-A-C-Y dot com slash C-I-N-E-M-A-S-S-A-C-R-E to get $5 off your first purchase. All right, so I want to talk about what do you think are the goriest movies you've ever seen? Now, you can give more than one answer if you want, but... It could be what do you actually think is the goriest film or which is the goriest film that affected you the most. So you could take it either way. Because actually, I want to talk a little bit about the history of gore and like really early examples. Because I always find it to be more shocking the older it is because then it's kind of like, like, oh, wow, they did that back then. That's like, you know, breaking boundaries. But anyway, we can just go down the line. So, Tony, you want to go first? All right. So um, I don't think this movie has the best gore or the most realistic gore but if we're gonna do just sheer volume of gore it looked no further than dead alive definitely or yeah. brain dead like mm -hmm. this usually tops most mm -hmm. glorious movie ever made list and it is great i love this movie yeah i love it it starts on skull island so oh, yeah. <laughs> uh so peter jackson was already planning the idea and yeah. actually, if you watch King Kong, there's a rat monkey in a cage in that movie. <laughs> oh, are they in the same universe? Yeah, it's the King Kong expanded universe. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, the movie starts off like, like I don't want to say tame, but like guy gets his arm cut off mm. and his hand. You're like, oh, that's pretty gross. And then, then you know, the, the rat gets its head crushed. And then mm. by the end of the movie, there's just a guy's organs just come to life. And they're yeah. puppeteered. There's a head that's being knocked around like a hockey yeah. puck that can move and stuff. A baby rips someone's head apart. It, yeah, it, and then He's you got get the to the lawnmower. Yeah, you get up to the lawnmower, which the lawnmower. they set up the lawnmower pretty early. They do that cool shot where it like shows up right above, like yeah, right above oh, the camera, okay. yeah. and you're like foreshadowing. Yeah, like huh? That's that's a that, that's also why that's why we did had the lawnmower in Paperboy Three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This uh this actually influenced one of my movies. My uh. My senior thesis, I had the kids at a Catholic school, and they went to Father Magruder High School. Oh. And I made the, because the priest that does the karate, yeah. oh, which is another gory Lord. scene when he's just, I punching. kick yeah. ass for the yeah. Lord. So, so the logo and all the kids' uniforms was a priest just doing karate. <laughs> I think statistically, can't beat that alive, so I think you yeah. definitely, because yeah, it actually I, has, uh, I think, 80 gallons of blood. I think that's the statistic, <laughs> wow. so no movie has yeah. topped, I don't think. I mean, so. there's just, I, I, there's so much, I'm trying to think of, like, the goriest thing in the movie, but there's just so much, and then there's yeah. also, like, gross shit in the movie, like, yeah. when she oh, pops yeah. the pimple into oh, the pudding, oh, I almost throw yeah. up every time oh. I see that. Yeah, there was and, some, that was, like, a yeah. rough movie when you're watching And then, like, the and then the end, when it just ends with a guy doing, like, a cesarean on his mom, who's now turned into a zombie eight person, <laughs> Yeah, and just the blood and the chunks yeah. coming out, I'm oh. like... Jesus Christ, that, and I love it. That, like, how she is in the end reminds me of uh, the ending of Freaked when they turn into the monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some bad taste. No. I've never actually seen that yeah. one. Because I could never find a copy of that. Yeah, it was before Dead Alive, and yeah. it, it's not... It's not quite as gory, but it's still it's still up there. Um, Bad Taste, for some reason, appears on a lot of public domain like box sets, yeah. and it's not a public domain film. Some huh. some reason, it's just it's. It might be because it came from New Zealand, or it's like yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hey, I hear you guys talking about gory movies. Mm -hmm. You've seen Ricky O, right? That's a good one. Oh yeah, Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Do you remember the part at the ending of the movie? It's my favorite part where the guy turns into like the Incredible Hulk. 
and then they put him into the meat grinder. Yeah, it was so crazy about that movie. It, it, it starts up like you think it's just going to be a typical martial arts movie. But then all of a sudden these unrealistic things start happening like where he rips a guy's intestines out and strangles him with it. There's like a guy who like claps and explodes a guy's head. But yeah, then that part you're talking about, all of a sudden the guy turns into like this, this Hulk monster when nothing like that ever happens in the rest of the movie. And then... Um, Ricky he punches down the whole wall of the prison because the whole movie they're trying to get out of prison so if he could have punched down that whole wall the whole time we wouldn't have had a movie like he could have just escaped in the beginning I don't understand it anyway I gotta get back to work but can you check do we have House of a Thousand Boners alright looks like uh, somebody has it Kieran <laughs> so my glorious film I choose uh huh Robocop Robocop? That's a good one, too, yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, uh, you know, my dad used to let me rent whatever I wanted from the library, and I rented Robocop 2 and 3, and those movies are pretty tame, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then finally someone... Well, two, two's a little brutal, though, isn't yeah, it? Two, yeah, 2 sometimes it can be. Like, it Not had certain parts. Level, yeah. No, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that, you know, that thing had some violence, like the part when, when Kane grabs the girl and just, like, rings oh, her around. Oh, her face, yeah. Yeah, but the thing was, so someone had rented RoboCop 1, so the next week I rented RoboCop 1 finally to watch it, and it was like, it, before that I had never seen anything hmm. that violent. The hmm. first scene with... The guy and the Ed 209. You almost think he's going to be a, a character. Like he's going to be a yeah, main yeah. character in the film, but he gets killed so he, early. And he gets killed then, so horribly. Yeah. Like in front of everyone and, in the yeah. boardroom. And uh, even worse in the extended cut. Because yeah. they show once he falls on the table, he gets shot yeah. some more. Yeah, and then on top of that, Alex Murphy getting killed mm -hmm. is... One of the most like horrifying yeah, yeah. scenes ever. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. When they first blow his hand off and he's getting shot, okay, but like that final just bam right in the head yeah. Yeah. was, and then they show his face close up with a bullet hole mm -hmm. and his eyes are just wide open yeah. and they're trying to resuscitate him. Yeah. That, <clears throat> as, a, as a kid, I was just like, and then also my, my favorite scene of the movie yeah. is uh, Emil on the, oh my the toxic God. Oh, waste that truck. Oh, that used to scare me so where he's much. Just like, Ooh, when he's he gets the toxic waste yeah. gets on him and he's, and he's like all melting. melty. And the, the guy, skin on he his fingers to, uh, What's his name? He runs up to that one guy, the guy who's always in like Tim and Eric and all those things. Oh, uh, Leland Palmer from Twin yeah. Peaks. He runs up to him and he's just like, get off of me, <laughs> man. Get off and me, man. Him, and then he gets hit by Clarence in the yeah. 6,000 SUX and just explodes all over yeah. the windshield. I gotta say, like, Robocop might have been the thing, because I don't remember the first time I saw the movie because I I watched it so much as a very... I, I remember yeah. you said you saw it in the theater. I saw it when I was three years old. My, my, <laughs> my parents just had the VHS, and I would just watch it all the time because it was robots and cops. So I was, like, desensitized to that violence. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that just was probably a thing that happened, Honestly, which really fucked me up because my dad was a cop. I'm like, oh, I wonder if he has to deal with all this stuff. Oh, yeah. I think RoboCop had a status back then where it. I think it actually was considered by a lot. It was like the goriest movie that a lot of people had seen at least. Mm. And I remember in Hot Shots Part Two, um, <laughs> it was <laughs> where Charlie Sheen is basically playing Rambo, yeah. and he's just shooting all these people. And then it says equal to RoboCop yeah. and like <laughs> equal to the yeah. bloodiest movie ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess. You know, seeing RoboCop when I was three and just seeing a lot of gore and horror stuff and whatever growing up, I was just very desensitized to the entire thing. So, the thing that got me was Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. Because I saw that I saw that movie before Blair Witch. So the idea of like a fake movie, I mean, like like because I, I thought when I saw when I first saw Cannibal Holocaust, I was like eleven or twelve. I thought it was real. I heard something about that too. That it was like, I mean, there's real gore in it. The yeah, animal killing. Yeah, is real. There, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of yeah. animal stuff. It, it's really messed up. Yeah, that, that is a movie I will stress is not fun whatsoever. Yeah, like, no. like that is. It's a, it's I think there's like watch. a good story and stuff in there. I just think it lingers a little too yeah. much on some stuff. Because then, there, well, like, you know, it's, it's like an Italian, like you know, one of the. Uh, Italian Spanish kind of exploitation kinda. films. Yeah. For some reason, they went from uh, cowboys to zombies to cannibals yeah. very quickly. <laughs> and the cannibal stuff like this and Cannibal Ferox, mm -hmm. um, they're, I don't know, man. Like, like Cannibal Holocaust, you watch it now and you just feel bad. By the way, I want to say thanks for picking a movie that we can't show any goddamn clips of. You did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Right. We can yeah, show a lot of these The goriest stuff. scene in the movie features a naked woman. Thanks. Can't yeah, show that's that. Right. Uh, we can show, we, can, like, we, we show a still. <laughs> we put my heads over anything. Yeah, yeah. That works. 
Oh, good Lord. It's... It's unbelievable. It's... It's horrible. Yeah, I'm gonna blow your mind. I've never seen Cannibal Hall. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never. Watched I used it. to um in high school. I used to have like a contest with friends because I was into all the horror stuff, and that movie really like got to me. Just the real stuff, not so much all the other shit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would just do a thing with friends. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna put this movie on. Let's uh let's see how long you can make it through, and like barely and, like yeah. uh. I forget how early the turtle scene is, but yeah. no one can make yeah. it past the turtle I, scene. I saw this in theaters as well. <laughs> uh, like, not in the, you know, 70s. You went to, in, your parents took you to no, Italy? No, <laughs> they, they in Philly, they played it at Exum Films, oh, okay. like, the, like the film festival, and like half the theater just like blank. They left. They yeah. used to show it at my at my college, but like it was, they would do this like kind of cult uh, exploitation film kind of watching night, and they showed that and Caligula yeah. mm. at the same time. Um, yeah, this is not a movie I like to go anywhere near. Just to be yeah, quick. like I, I do not recommend it personally at yeah. all because it is very. Uh, the, it, it's interesting yeah. how it kind of like. Um, it's an important film. Yeah, it, though it's funny. The main actor in it uh, showed up in the first Spider-Man movie. He's on the 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 trash barge when Spider-Man's trying to save the car. He's the guy who's like, he's not gonna make it. He's gonna oh, make it. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the last King Kong movie, they have that scene where like that big spider thing puts its leg through the guy's oh, mouth, yeah. and it looks exactly like the girl That's with the snake my through mouth. I'm scene like, of that movie. did a big budget modern multi million dollar film just reference Cannibal yeah. Holocaust? Like that Probably. is so. Probably. I love that scene because it's like yeah. you think it's a bamboo forest, and then it's a yeah. giant spider. I think it was a cool story in there. You know. I don't think they tell it the best way, and they linger on a lot of the yeah. animal killing. And, then, and that, I, I started figuring it out because then Blair Witch came out, and they're like, "Oh, it's a fake." And yeah. I was like, "Really?" So I'd, I'd say, um, truthfully, I believe Dead Alive is the goriest. But as far as one that affected me the most, I would say it is uh, John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. Yeah. When you're watching John Carpenter's The Thing as a kid. Uh, I remember one time, I think my dad had it on. He didn't know what was going to happen, that it was going to get so crazy so quick. Mm -hmm. Because you're watching it and you don't think anything could really happen like this. But all of a sudden, a dog's face just splits yeah. open. Yeah. And then you're like, whoa, whoa what like what kind of rules exist in this movie? Like this, the, pretty much anything could happen. Like the guy's head comes off and grows spider legs. Yeah. And like you have all this stuff happening where a lot of these movies are really gory. But this is a movie where the actual gore is what's attacking you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing has no actual shape. It has yeah. no. Yeah, you never know what it's it originally e looks it's like. It's not even an individual thing. Like it's mm -hmm. a collection of cells. It's like a virus. It's just a yeah. collection of like cells and shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I said during like one of the Halloween episodes we did, um, where I say that the thing is one of my top five horror movies because mm -hmm. the thing's fucking awesome. Yeah, right? yeah. and um, Rob Bowen did a button. Bowen, Rob Bowen. I know the name, I just don't know. Rob Bodden. Okay. Rob Bodden did like an amazing, he was like real young when he did this too, doing the effects in this. Yeah. Uh, he got a little bit of help from Stan Winston. Mm -hmm. So they had like the top like gore, like creature effects mm -hmm. people at the time. And yeah, that dog scene is what really like, Oh yeah. when people yeah. watch that, they're like, oh, ah. Yeah, it's like I now don't... you know, what you're in the, you're early in the movie and you're like, yeah. oh my God, this just happened now. Like what's going to happen yeah. later? One What's of my like, favorite things about it is uh, the story that they always tell where when they brought the movie over to Norway, the scene where the Norwegian guys are like yelling at them about the dog. <laughs> and uh, apparently like in Norwegian or whatever, they literally say the entire plot of the movie. <laughs> like they tell everything about it. Like it's an alien, it yeah. shapeshifts, all these things. So oh, when they really? sent it to Norway, it was subtitled. But when those guys spoke, everyone in Norway understood it and it ruined the whole movie <laughs> from the very beginning for everybody. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's great. I, yeah, I didn't know that. It was like, I, I was reading about it and it was like making me laugh because they were like, it's little things like in America, the movie, mm -hmm. when it goes over, it doesn't translate the right way. Yeah. So they ruined the whole movie in the very beginning for all mm. Norwegians. No. I got. I guess my favorite gore scene in that is mm -hmm. the defibrillator scene. Oh, it eats his hand. Yeah, when it yeah. eats the guy's oh, hand. It reminds yeah. me of uh, the Ghostbuster toy when it has like the oh, stomach. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, fun. I know what you mean, yeah. I so anyway, that's... The gore movie that probably affected me the most is because it was really young. Uh, I was really young when I saw it. But I think the ones that are most effective are the older horror movies that broke new grounds. Because every time when you're the first to do something, that always is the most shocking. So I just want to quickly run through a bunch of old movies that were before the rating system in America. So um, like before Night of the Living Dead even before Psycho. Yeah. So um, the first one, the first gore movie I can really think of that has any kind of gore, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a silent movie. It's 
It's spelled like Uncheon Andalo. It's from 1929. It's like an avant-garde film. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a French surreal film. This was like a movement that was going on. And there's a close-up shot, very famous close-up shot of an eyeball being sliced. Oh, God open. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, you know my fear of eyeballs oh, being stabbed, yeah. <laughs> and I know exactly what you're talking about. I had to you watch that in school. Oh, yeah. It's actually a goat it's, eyeball, but yeah, yeah or uh, a cow. A cow, I think. What? Maybe yeah. it was a goat. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's brutal. Um, then uh, the Mummy, 1932. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is exactly. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. exactly. Yeah, I thought we were past the eye. Yeah, thing. yeah. And the Mummy, 1932. There's a flashback scene where they show in ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, they impale this guy. So you see a guy with a spear um, just rammed through his body. Yeah, um, those like, Universal movies weren't super gore. That's the one I can think yeah. of. That's like, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's pre Hayes Code. There was like in 1934, I believe it was the Hayes Code, mm -hmm. and that was when they had to get like they started getting more strict with. Um, you know, because in The Black Cat in 1934, uh, Lugosi has um, Karloff, you know, chained up. And then he's like, he, he uses these surgery tools to like basically scrape his whole face off. But they show it in a shadow. So I don't really yeah. count that because you don't see any gore. Maniac 1934 was this short film. And it was basically um, uh, an adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. Uh, oh, yeah, that's another Black Cat movie, same year, <laughs> pretty <Sorry>. crazy. <laughs> yeah, and basically there's this shot where they basically pop an eyeball out of a cat, but I think what they did was, because you look at it and you're like, geez, like, did they just harm an animal? But I think what they did, they had a cat that was already missing an eye to begin with. Oh. They put a fake eye over it and, like, popped that. But it's really grotesque when you look at that and you're like, geez, like, because for a black and white 1930s film, you don't expect to see something like that. Yeah. But uh, then there's a 1936, there's another Poe short, The Case of uh, Valdemar. And uh, that one, there's a shot at the end where there's this guy's face that melts. And it's, you know, it's in black and white, but it still is, is pretty gruesome how they did it. And it's long. It's like this long sequence of this guy's face just melting. And then, of course, you get in all the Hammer films. So you have... Uh, Curse of Frankenstein, 1957. That one showed body parts and um, there is blood in color. So I think that's when you start getting into the color phase. But there's still a lot of black and white movies. Um, Fiend Without a Face was 1958. In that movie, you actually see brains being smashed with an axe. <gasps> that one is like really gruesome. And, and there's like blood just bubbling out. And, <laughs> and, it, and the sound effects are like... <laughs> it's like... It's so good. If you see, yeah, Fiend Without a Face, it's like the last 10 or 15 minutes. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, then, okay, this one really stands out to me. It's a 1960 Eyes Without a Face. It's black and white, but they actually show um, a, a surgeon peeling off a girl's face yeah. and they totally peel off her entire face. It's not a very convincing effect, <laughs> but still the fact that they show the whole face being peeled off and then transplanted onto a new face, on a new body. Uh, it, it's, it's done in explicit detail. It's long, like they don't cut away or anything. They just show the whole thing happen. And that is pretty crazy. Was it better than Face Off? <laughs> <laughs> a lot gorier for one thing. I yet. just realized Face Off, like they're facing off. I always thought it was just the face thing. That well, just hit you, you now? I, like, I, I didn't know Face Off was going to be literal when I watched it. I'm like, yeah, it is like and, I, and I then took it the other to, way. I thought yeah. it was he's taking his face off. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, he has to explain, like, he takes his face off. <gasps> face off. Oh, it's like, no yeah, more drugs yeah. for that guy. See, that's why I thought. Uh, <laughs> All right, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this, but there's the monster of uh, Piedras Blancas, I think, uh, 1959. There's actual severed heads in this one. Wow. This is one of the first, like, severed heads I can recall. And then uh, Black Sunday, 1960, there's an executioner. Uh, puts this, like, metal mask onto someone's face mm. and then pounds it with the sledgehammer. Oh, wow. And you see blood come out the eye holes of the, the mask. Yeah. yeah, black and white. But, uh, you know, Mario Bava, he was definitely up in the, the, the gore there. And then actually, if I were to count Mario Bava films, we can keep on going. Um, Psycho, 1960, we have the stabbing sequence. Yeah. Uh, then in 1963, we have both the birds and the terror, with which both have somebody's eyes being pecked out. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm. when I saw the birds as a kid, 
I saw it like when I was probably like 10 or 11, but mm -hmm. I remember being like, wow, you guys were allowed to do that? Because yeah. It was like, yeah, and twice in the same year. Yeah. yeah. Like, because the one part where the guy has like his just eye, when she goes and mm -hmm. finds him in the house and his eyes mm -hmm. are just gone. Yeah. It was actually pretty shocking. Uh-huh. And it's the same effect in the terror, same year, but no credit to the terror. Nobody cares. But <laughs> <laughs> um, then there's all the Coffin Joe movies. So oh, if you can't, no. uh, like you got the eye gouging, the severed <laughs> fingers. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Decomposing faces. Well, I have to mention Night of the Living Dead, but that, that was 1968, which was the same year the, uh, the rating system came into effect. I don't know if it was because of that, but it was, it was definitely... Uh, that's the year that I was kind of marked. Like, this is when modern horror begins. And then, of course, I have to... I don't want to get into the 70s or anything, but just have to mention Herschel Gordon-Lewis, uh, 1970, oh, yeah. Wizard of Gore. Like, he was definitely the one who yeah. pretty much invented the gore genre. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, there you go. There's a bunch of gory, uh, you know, history for you to check out. Yep. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Stabbing eyeball. Oh, oh, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> well, I got an idea for a movie. You ready? Right. Right. So it's uh, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, and they swap eyeballs, and it's called <laughs> it's called Eye to Eye. Oh God. Uh.